Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ingus and I'm from IGS Electronics. Today we're going to continue again for another Mitsubishi analog card that we're going to be adding to this FX3 S PLC and that is FX3U3AD-ADP uh, card, so no it's actually not AD, it's a 3 a and that card is pretty much give you something from both worlds uh, you can have a two analog uh, inputs and one analog output so that's something we are definitely going to be uh, checking out how to set that card up and uh, pretty much uh, well the wiring and then we're going to check out in the software how to get the, the values in going in and out and see measure uh, run some simulations and things like that so if you have missed uh, or haven't seen all the last videos we did with uh, all other other cards that we've been adding to this plc you'll be able to find those uh, links in the description below any related manuals anything else i think will benefit you in any possible way you will find them in the description below so without further ado let's get started <music> Here we are, so uh, let's go through again as always the wiring and terminal layout as you as you remember from the uh, pre uh, If you haven't watched the previous videos, you do need the S uh, FX 3s CNV uh, Adapter card so if you want to see the a bit more about this setup how they how we do set up all this part up Do check out the analog input cards for channel input cards video where we are talking a lot more in depth with this so uh, by adding the card we have a uh, two, two two block terminals in there and again let's go through the, uh, the, the 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 terminals itself what they mean so as always we need a 24 volt signal supply with earth and you can see down here we have v plus and i plus and we got the uh, v2 plus and uh, i2 plus these are our first uh, these are our two analog uh, input channels so and make sure for the volts uh, it is connection is between a v uh, for incoming volts if you're sending in the voltage is a v and a com and if you want a, to a, uh, a read a, a read a, the current to so make sure the v1 and i1 is joined together and obviously that that will be your positive and your com is going to be your negative and so on for the second channel as well and also you do need to do a uh, do a selection of uh, a switch selection inside the uh, software uh, which we are going to be talking about that in a minute and uh then you have this button here so you can see the com i o and v o those are those are your uh uh, analog uh, output so uh, from there on if you want to output a volt you will say a minus would be going to the com and obviously a v is zero will be your plus for the volts and if you were to do it for the current uh, it will be com and i o uh, which is going to be standing for the current and there is no switch for that inside the uh, uh, P, uh, software so you don't need to do anything regarding that so it, because that's been uh, completely segregated from each other within this card so that's ladies and gentlemen how this card would work and how would this wire up and how we uh because we are going to be showing in a minute two meters and things like and uh, how he's connected two meters uh, one process meter and one uh, just a normal voltage meter do check out the previous videos where we are especially with when we, we were talking about uh, pro, uh, uh, simulating the signal in the first video where uh, first video where we uh, uh, reviewed the uh, 4 ad card this is where it's actually show you, i'll show you how to set that up so uh, let me get all the wiring done and i will see you at the pc Here we go, so now we're in front of the computer, so first things as always, we need to check out the manual, what is what assigned to our card, and I have all the readings, and basically all the ins and outs of the card, and the one we can see in here is FX3U, 3A, ADP, that's the one we're going to be working on, two, charge, two analog inputs and one uh, analog output. First things have a look at again, only one card for my PLC, and whatever PLC you're in, make sure to check out this uh, section in here. So uh, the following one, we're going to have a look at it in the actual ranges, which are in here, as you can see down there, analog input output range is 0 to 10 volts. And uh, if you go down here, you can see the resolution. So it sort of explains you how it would measure. 
And uh, what's the range in a digi uh, a digital value conversion? So it will be 4,000, uh, 0 would be 0 obviously, and 4,000 will be full 10 volts. And also for 4 and, and 20 milliamp, we are going to be uh, seeing that we need the ranges from 0 to uh, 3,200. So uh, that's where you find out your ranges and obviously the for different temperatures and things like that absolute maximums and, and basically check out this page for more of our specifications and then we are uh, cracking on in here they sort of uh, tells you how the wiring would work and things like that so what which we already talk about then we need to get uh, to the we don't need any of this in here as you can see as, 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 as I mentioned already it shows you the link if you're using a current so uh, then th we're gonna get to the programming part of it. So we're gonna go first uh, to switching of inputs. So uh, actually relays uh, 8,280 will uh, be N81 because we have a two analog inputs. You can see uh, you, you need to make sure you select uh, switches on. So uh, you, uh, don't do anything if you're gonna be using voltage, but do make sure that you put uh, this one, these bits on so, so you uh, the card at the PLC knows that he's reading the current input so now see for other cards as well this is all the bits assigned and the next one we're going to look at it is a holding function this we're going to be checking out a bit later and the uh, next one in here is you can actually a uh, set or whatever or not the channel is used so basically if you're using these bits you can uh, Turn on channel uh, when when they are on the normal conditions when they when they are not uh, when they are when you want or use them all don't do anything because in off position channel is used and if you make sure you want um, that channel is not used at all so you can put it on and it will not be used in the PLC will not uh, sort of uh, we'll say recognize it or or just keep it out of uh, his memory. So, and then uh, input uh, data, as you can see down there, the uh, for FX3S, uh, 80 and 81, for channel uh, 80 would be for channel 1 input data, and, and 81 for channel 2 input data. And then for our output setting, it's our 8882, this is where our special registers will be uh, receiving information, what sort of out voltage it needs to output. So that's pretty much that, and uh, down here, is well the average timings so for a uh, our channel one and channel two for the uh, inputs and in, in, in a, the data register 800 8288 this is where our error statuses will be kept and it gives you all the full outline in here uh, how to a uh, 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 monitor them as well so if you see down here all the sub bits i call them sub bits some people call them differently so 8288.0 will be channel over scaling detection and so on all the way to dot nine and uh, which sort of explains you in here what each thing is so this is how you monitor uh, the errors so now having done that so let's jump to the plc now we know where, where what we're working with what data registers and things like that that's a very important information in here that we need so let's uh, jump uh, to the plc as you see in the end of the corner, I have two meters. One is a simulator, which is a uh, Fluke 789 meter, a process meter. Another one, I got a very, very uh, cheap crude Fluke meter, which is basically just something I walk around the factory and uh, just sort of a, a tool to measure things very basically. And this meter is unable to read anything below one volt, so you won't be able to see any readings uh, from one volt. I do have better meters coming, but we'll have to live with what we've got. So, um, what we have, we have uh, the the fluke a uh, 113 meter. It will be measuring the volts coming out, and the fluke uh, 789 will be uh, simulating our current input. So uh, let's jump on to RGX Works 2. And I have already uh, pre-written the program, so you don't have to watch me write the program. So uh, I'll, I'll talk you through step by step. So let's load the program. So that'll be this guy in here. So there we go. This is the program we have in here. So uh, let me talk you through how this all works. If you remember, we talked about the a uh, uh, input modes. 
As you can see down here, M8280 needs to be on if we are reading current value. So that's exactly what we're doing in here. So that's always on. And from there on, we got another always on signal in here. And then we have an M0 in here, which we're going to talk in a minute why that is in it. Because remember, for any read to happen, it has to have on signal. So uh, I'll show you what happens if you don't have it. So, and then we have a move instruction in here that is a formulated like a so move at D8280. And where are we moving the data? We are moving data into D0. So uh, that's how pretty much that is happening because from there on, we can take that data and transfer whatever we will. We can do whatever we wish to with that data if, if, if we want it to. And in our case, what we're going to do, we're going to use that same data, D0, and we're going to be modifying uh, the uh, analog output voltage, uh, analog output values for the voltage so basically it's going to take that d0 value value and sending it into d8288 which is our voltage output channel if you remember from here so uh and it will be outputting voltage on our meter as well as it goes up and down. So having done that so let's go have a look uh, oh yeah and this is the our averaging time in here so move K200 moves at the time into D8284. It takes that time and it pretty much uh, accumulates all the data within that time and outputs the average value only. Rather than everything, it outputs just the average value. And basically that would stabilize our uh, jumping, number jumping around. So uh, let's go into the monitoring mode. So as you can see now in here, if I click up as you can see the value in d8280 has changed but it has not moved to zd0 because we need to have on signal so that's just a brief reminder if you are watching these uh, these uh, videos regarding uh, instructions uh, move instruct uh, move uh, functions so uh, that's what needs to be as you can see now we're just constantly moving the values around as you can see on my meter the value on a volt has changed to two volt and i do apologize sometimes my meter is a bit glitchy it just sometimes it goes off for whatever reason so and if let's if we put maximum as you can see when i was, so if you put the maximum one that is a 20 milliamps but it, it comes out as eight volts so as you remember when you read it at the beginning for the milliamps the max value is 3200 and for volts max value is 4000 so to achieve full 10 volts we need 4000 so just to bear that in mind now let's create a little uh, simulation as you can see this meter now is running numbers up and down and the values are changing as you can see in, in on the meters so uh having done that so quickly let's check it out uh, we need to uh, we need uh, let's check it out how can we change it read out a whatever reason he's not reading donor it's weird the way it works yeah um how could we uh, get that 10 volts out so uh, by uh, simulating it somehow so we need to remove a signal or the, off that one so now this data now we because we want to modify the d0 value and that uh, you can't modify in a watch which is in here you can't modify in watch uh, these values the card values because they are read only so we only can do the internal changes so what we can do now we can uh, start the watch start watch so as you can see those values are there so so we're going to modify d uh, zero d zero to four thousand as you can see now that uh, value has uh, been changed and we are reading roughly yeah. 10 volts there we go so uh that gives us uh, roughly about 10 volts and that's where this ladies and gentlemen is pretty much how analog input and analog output card this is a very good card if you need uh, just a bo best of both worlds that is this card is perfect and there's another another addition you can add to the uh, plc it is a this guy in here which is a fx3g uh, oh that's only good for the fx3g sorry you can't add that to fx3 splc actually let me jump and double check that 
Oh no, you can uh, uh, you can be connected to. Oh yeah, you can add you can one D A D B D can be added to a FX3 S F P L C. So uh, that could be additional. That we uh, oh no, you can't do it initially. That that could be addition another card that you can add to FX3 S P L C. So maybe in the future we're gonna check that out as well. And that, ladies and gentlemen, will do for this uh, FX3 U3 A. Uh, ADB card. Hopefully you enjoyed and understood everything that is going on and what we're doing in here. Definitely ask some questions if you didn't and I will do my best uh, to answer them as quick and as accurate as I can. Uh, I can. So uh, if you like that video, don't forget to smash that like, subscribe because there's a lot more coming. So uh, thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video.